It's time to focus on the 2024 recruiting class, so let's start right at the top. The number one cornerback in the country, Ellis Robinson IV, has a decision date set for February 1st. Robinson is the number one ranked corner in the country and the number two ranked overall player according to the on three rankings. Only quarterback Dylan Rayola is ranked higher than Robinson when it comes to the 2024 class. Let's bring on director of recruiting, Chad Simmons. Chad, you had a chance to talk to the six foot one, 185 pound lockdown corner this weekend at the Battle Seven on Seven in Miami. Who did he tell you is the main competition in his recruitment? Josh, he doesn't want to really, I guess, eliminate any of the five. You know, he has that final five. Of course, you have the Alabama, you know, Colorado, Georgia, um, LSU, and Miami. Uh, you know, he talked about, you know, all five schools. I would say pretty equally. I think the majority of people that have followed him and covered him and gotten to know him uh, have always thought it would come down to Alabama and Georgia. Of course, you can't count out Coach Prime. He talked about what it would be like to play for a coach like that, that played uh, his position at the highest level. Uh, of course, Miami, he was there over the weekend again with his team role uh, at the 7-on-7 event. He was at Georgia last weekend as well. So uh, I do think, though, in the end, the likely contenders are Alabama and Georgia. Yeah, tell me about those two teams. They seem like they are at the front. Robinson was at Georgia's national championship celebration as well for another visit. So what is it about these two teams? Why are they the front runners? Look, with Alabama, when things got started for Ellis, you know, his first trip was to Miami. At that time, Traveris Robinson was the DB coach at Miami. That that relationship has been budding since then. He loves, obviously, Alabama's history. Uh, of course, Nick Saban is a defensive back expert as well. Uh, what they do with the NFL draft and player development. We, we, had, we said the same thing pretty much every time about why Alabama is Alabama, and that's really the thing for Ellis Robinson. End of the day, he's a five-star kid, a five-star talent that wants to be playing in the NFL one day. He thinks Alabama and both Georgia and maybe other schools as well can prepare him best for that. But Alabama, what's different there is probably the connection with T-Rob. And then to Georgia, I think the connection with Fran Brown. He knew Fran Brown from his time at Rutgers before he got to Georgia. Since he got to Georgia, uh, they really blossomed, got to know each other. Talk about a lot of things outside of football. Uh, of course, he's been to both Bama and Georgia multiple times, feels good around the, the environment, the coaching staff, the players there. Again, you can't count out Coach Prime in Colorado, but I think Alabama and Georgia are trending at the top. Yeah, let's talk about Coach Prime. Travis Hunter, Cormani McLean, Ellis Robinson? Is he next? Number one corner? I mean, Deion Sanders has landed the number one corner in the country before. So is Ellis Robinson next for Deion Sanders? You know, if I had to say yes or no, it would be a no. But again, you know, who, who said a year ago, we're talking about Ellis Robinson committing early, obviously a year ago, uh, Prime didn't have that job at Colorado. Cormani McLean wasn't looking at Colorado. A lot of things can change. But right now, February 1st, I don't think Coach Prime makes that splash with Ellis Robinson. What about Miami? They didn't have a great year on the field, but boy, were they able to recruit. Is Miami going to be able to keep Ellis Robinson? I know he said IMG is not originally from Florida, but is Ellis Robinson? Does Miami have a shot to keep him in state? You know, a shot, I think, was slim. I just don't think I've never gotten the feel uh, just conversing with Ellis. You know, we, we talk often. We have a great relationship. And, yeah, I just haven't gotten the vibe of the interest being at the same level for Miami as some other schools on that list. Again, he was there uh, with Team Raw, his 7-on-7 seven -seven team over the weekend. So technically, uh, they're the last ones to get him on campus before he makes that decision. So anything could happen there. Uh, he's talked with Mario Cristobal, that defensive staff, Kevin Steele. Uh, numerous guys are involved. But I think right now Miami's on the back end of that top five for Ellis Robinson. Okay, where would you put LSU amongst those five? Not too far from Miami, being honest with you. Probably, you know, right, right there on the back end. Probably, I, I would think right now, probably LSU and Miami are in those four and five spots. If I had to rank the one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, five uh, in his top five. But again, LSU, he's only been there once. Hasn't been there uh, as much as he has like the Alabama, Georgia, even Miami. Has not tripped to Colorado at all. So that, again, doesn't help, you know, Colorado and their chances right now for Ellis Robinson. 
all right, we know he's good. I mean, he's a five star. He's the number one player at his position. But what makes Robinson so good after you got a chance to see him in person at the battle seven on seven? Yeah, I've had the pleasure to watch Ellis probably, I would say, at least six or seven times since, you know, around April of last year. Uh, going back to the IMG private workouts and seeing him at spring practice and then uh, seeing IMG play twice this season uh, and then this weekend as well and other events. But Ellis never disappoints, man. There's something about him, obviously on the hoof, you know, 6'1", super long arms, uh, can turn and run. He's shown he can play on and off coverages. Uh, he can be physical when he needs to. He tracks the ball extremely well. And just I, I love the attitude, the mentality he plays with. And just it's just very quiet confidence. He doesn't yap it up a lot, doesn't always talk, and he wants to learn. He focuses on his task at hand. Whoever's in front of him, he wants to shut him down. It's not about getting in his head so much with talking trash, not about, hey, look at me, look at me. It's about letting my work speak for itself. And to me, I love to watch that kind of guy. When you're that talented with that kind of X on your chest to kind of just make your mark very quietly but with no balls thrown that direction when they are they're typically batted down or picked off so to me just his play and the way he goes about the business says a lot about who he is it's that quiet confidence you gotta love it uh he's robinson is making his decision on february 1st that coincides with 2023 signing day robinson is a 2024 recruit why do you think this will be his final decision you know, it's hard to ever say it's going to be a final decision, especially this early uh, in the process, Josh. But look, he, he said from the beginning, when I know, I know. That's been his quote to be multiple times in different interviews. When I know, I know. And, and when I find my decision or find my school, I'm going to announce my decision. And uh, I think he's kind of been trending that way maybe over the last month to two months to kind of really thinking about committing early uh, in the new year in 2023. Um, he thought about maybe taking a few officials in April, May uh, and getting it done maybe in June or around that time. But again, when you know, you know, he feels confident in his decision and he's ready to make that. All right. We're a week away, just about a week away from the number two overall player, Ellis Robinson, the fourth, making his decision. Chad Simmons, thanks for joining us on the Inside Scoop. Yep. Anytime. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.